the more things change, the more they stay the same. Uh, this video is going to be a discussion of current events in light of the timeless teachings of, of A Course in Miracles. Um, <clears throat> specifically, I want to talk about, about um, music duos <laughs> and, and how music duos uh, sometimes break up, right? Um, and, and the latest being Tenacious D, the Tenacious Duo of, uh, of Kyle Gass and Jack Black. Um, and, and just bring in uh, some ideas from A Course in Miracles into, into the discussion. Uh, I also want to follow up on a video from yesterday that I was doing where I, uh, I, I ran out of space. So I want to just complete that discussion. But I want to um, start by talking about how <clears throat> people keep talking about how things, you know, are getting worse. Um, the the divisiveness and the the state of division, like in, in the United States, but all over the world, really. Um, and it's really, you know, the the things keep taking different forms. Um, sometimes it it looks better, sometimes it looks worse, but the content is has is the same, right? It's it hasn't really changed. And it may never have really changed, right? It's the same damn thing that's been happening since the dawn of, of time, you know? Um, why, why is this moment any different than any other moment? I don't think it is. It, it may look that way. And, and people, I think, in every generation think that they're, they're in the last generation, you know, the apocalypse is going to come anytime soon. The world is going to end. <laughs> Probably not, right? Because the world still hasn't ended. But... Um, you know, if you look at the political rhetoric, I was talking about how after after Trump's near assassination, which actually probably would have been very chaotic if that actually had happened. If, if Trump, Trump had actually been killed, you know, so people people for one say, well, it was a miracle. God saved Trump. That 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 shows that God, that that that. Trump has God on, on his side and, 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 and you know, um, God's looking after Trump. <laughs> Trump. God wants Trump to win the election. That may be so. Who knows? I, I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying it is or it isn't. But you could also say, well, it could mean that, um, that, that God was looking out for, for this country <laughs> and the world because, you know, if Trump had been assassinated, assassinated Things would be much worse than they are right now. Probably, you know, it, the, there would be, you know, chaos. Probably there would pro probably be, you know, um, a lot more, you know, things happening as a result of that. Um, so you, you re really, no one is in a place to judge, right? We, 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 no one can really say one way or the other. But the rhetoric is the rhetoric, right? The rhetoric. You know, that was the other thing is that they, people were saying, well, now things are going to be a little different. Things are, you know, now now maybe people will start to tone down the rhetoric, stop um, the name calling and the, and the demonization and, and all the other things. That's not true either. Of course, that's not true. You know, that might that happened for like a moment, a brief moment, and then we're back to business as usual, of course. Um <clears throat> Now, you probably have heard, for those of you especially who are Tenacious D fans, um, I, I became a fan way back. Um, I think I started listening probably kind of long after after School of Rock came out. That's when Jack Black really came, became famous. And I really loved that movie, actually. And then a little bit later, I started to listen to T Tenacious D, and I really enjoyed their music. And... And um, I think I think comedy, comedy music, is um, is kind of sometimes relegated to being uh, gimmicky, and, and, and people don't take it as seriously. I, I do think that that uh, Tenacious D, you know, they 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 do have something really really excellent. You know, um, obviously they've they've played like a thousand shows which is a lot, I, I think, you know, uh, they seem to, they seem to draw big crowds. Um, 
that's why it's interesting what just happened, which is they were in Australia, apparently playing a show right after Trump's assassination. And it was Kyle's birthday. And they brought out a cake for him. And Jack Black says, you know, make a wish. You might have seen the video. And, and, and Kyle says, um, next time I hope they don't miss Trump, you know, <laughs> uh, whatever he said. And, um, and people in the audience laughed because that's probably the audience that, that the Tenacious D draws is, is, you know, they're probably mainly Democrats. And Jack Black, right before that happened, Jack Black um, did this thing for Biden. He, he, he did this, uh, this little uh, support for him that, that went viral. And I saw, saw that. It's, uh, you know, you can watch that on YouTube. Um, so then the, some, some people in, in, in the Australian government wanted to kick, kick them out of the country because, because um, Kyle made that remark. And Jack Black made a statement <clears throat> that um, he was blindsided by what Kyle said, and he was canceling their tour, and he was putting on, he was postponing any projects, uh, which kind of left it up in the air. You know, any tenacious deep projects in the future kind of leaves it up in the air whether they're going to continue as a group or not. Maybe, maybe they're going to hang it up. I don't know. I don't think anyone knows, but but um, it was just an interesting thing because, first of all, they're known for being such buddies, right? Jack Black and Kyle Gass. I, I mean, at least that's the impression you get. And then if, it kind of feels like Jack Black is like, you know, throwing him under the bus, throwing Kyle under the bus for making a little mistake. He, you know, he, he apologized for it. <laughs> he apologized for what he said. Uh, and it seems a little extreme on Jack Black's part. You know, I can understand if Jack Black would say, you know, uh, Kyle made a mistake. He, he, you know, it was the heat of the moment. He, he said something that he shouldn't have said. And let's be, but let's be clear about, about, about this. You know, the, the, the official rhetoric <laughs> is, uh, you know, people say after these things, like the Democrats, many of them said nice things about Trump and, and you know, that they, that they, they decry the, the, you know, the violence and, 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 and has no place in a democracy, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Secretly, what are they thinking or what are they, or what are they saying? Probably something like what Kyle said or what, um, what someone close to me said, which is, uh, I asked, I asked him, you know, what did you think about the, the Trump near assassination? He's like, I'm sorry, he missed. I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> wish he had a missed. Um, and um, so I think, I think Jack Black might have been a little, gone a little too far with that because I think Kyle made a, he made a mistake, right? He, he, he shouldn't have said that. Um, was Jack Black maybe thinking the same thing? Who knows, you know? Are, are a lot of people maybe secretly thinking the same thing, perhaps? And some people are openly saying it that are not like uh, celebrities or, or major public figures, because you can get away with it if you're not a, a celebrity or ma major public figure. Um, Kyle Gass obviously is, and, 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 you know, I think it was a political move on Jack Black's part to say, I, uh, to say, I, you know, I have to, I have to put a firm, I have to put my foot down and I have to make a firm stance and say, um, this is wrong. We're, we're not going to, we're not going to continue. But I think to go as far as to, to possibly split up the band and, and, and all of that, 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 that seems a little extreme. Um, it reminds me of someone's, something someone said to me, um, which was that, you know, it, it, it he used to talk about how, um, you know, back in the day, if you missed a note when you when you're playing with a band and you missed a note, you were out of the band. <laughs> you couldn't make one mistake, right? If you made a mistake, you were out. Um, but that's kind of, I think, the way things uh, are in in our world. You know, it's like um, there's no room. Sometimes it seems like there's no room for 
you made a mistake, right? But it, 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 it takes on the, 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 the degree of, of seriousness that it's like a sin and we have to just, you know, you're, you're out. Kyle's gone. <laughs> Kyle made a mistake and that's the end of it, right? It seems, it seems um, a little extreme, you know, and I think from, from A Course in Miracles perspective, um, what I think, you know, um, Jack Black could have said, and maybe he will come around to getting back together with Kyle, but what he could have said was, yes, Kyle made a mistake in that moment. He's sorry for it. I support Kyle, even though he did say the wrong thing. Um, he's my buddy and, you know, so there must probably must be something else going on there with, between Jack and Kyle, you know, I would think, you know, it wasn't just about that. Maybe that was an excuse to, to, to call it quits, at least for the moment. But anyway, we've seen other duos like that. Like who, who would have ever thought that Hall and Oates would, would, would go the way they've gone. You can think of Simon and Garfunkel, <laughs> you know, all the duos that, that are no longer talking to each other, the, the, the musicians that, that, that made this amazing music, life-changing music, um, music for the ages, and then all of a sudden, you know, there's a rift. Um, so <laughs> with all that said, let's read a little bit uh, of A Course in Miracles. Um, I, was, I was reading from this part in, um, in chapter 6, The Lessons of Love, where Jesus talks about the apostles and how the apostles did not get the original teaching right. So one other thing I want to say is, you see it in, in the world of A Course in Miracles, right? You see it in the world of Christianity. You see all the divisiveness in the world of Christianity. This, this world is, is characterized by division and separation, right? Um, people disagree about, about what the scripture says. And it's the same thing in the world of A Course in Miracles. People cannot get along. People are, are arguing. It's, on, it's only 50 years young. The course is only 50 years young. It was published in 1976. And there's al already divisiveness and there's already, um, um, you know, uh, back and forth and demonization and all these other things that, that are going on. And it's just like anything else. <laughs> the course is not any different, right? It's, you would think that it would be, but it's not because that's the world we live in, right? We're in the illusion. We're in a world of, of, of divisiveness. We're in a world of separation. And what would you expect? That's what, that's what it is, right? Um, let's read this, this paragraph I started to read yesterday and I didn't get through all of it. This is paragraph 16 in, in chapter six, the lessons of love. The section is um, section one, the message of the crucifixion on page 95 of the blue third edition. As you read the teachings of the apostles, remember that I told them myself that there was much they would understand later because they were not wholly ready to follow me at the time. This is in the Gospel of John that Jesus said that. I do not want you to allow any fear to enter into the thought system toward which I am guiding you. I do not call for martyrs, but for teachers. No one is punished for sins and the sons of, God's, son, sons of God are not sinners. Any concept of punishment involves the projection of blame and reinforces the idea that blame is justified. The result is a lesson in blame for all behavior teaches the beliefs that motivate it. <clears throat> the crucifixion was the result of clearly opposed thought systems, the perfect symbol of the quote conflict unquote between the ego and the son of God. This conflict seems just as real now, and its lessons must be learned now as well as then. So things have not changed, in other words. The more things change, the more they stay the same, right? The forms keep changing, the content remains the same, right? The, the conflicts keep changing, but, but the, underlying, um, the underlying issue is still there, right? The content is still there. I do not need gratitude, but you need to develop your weakened ability to be grateful or you cannot appreciate God. He does not need your appreciation, but you do. God doesn't need anything, right? God doesn't need anything from us. He doesn't need gratitude. He does not need prayer. He does not need us to tell him how great he is, <laughs> but he needs us. We, I'm not, no, he does not need, we need, we need that, 
right? We need to, to feel the, the, the love and the unity that comes from gratitude and appreciation. And, and we need to learn that from, from being grateful and appreciating our, our brothers, right? And our brothers is really all others. Um, so when we, um, when we go away from that love, we, we hurt ourselves. We, we, it's, you know, when we, when we have any kind of unloving thought or unforgiveness, we're really just hurting ourselves. We're not, you know, we, we think we might, might be hurting someone else and that's good, but, but really, no, no, you know, let's, let's just be, be very clear about that. And that was just as true back then as it is now. Maybe now though, we have, um, we have a way that we can um, understand these things a little bit better. We can learn the lessons of the past if we want, right? <laughs> but even back then they could learn the lessons of the past too. You know, I don't, think, I don't think what the course is getting at is any more or less available now than it was then. It, it, it's the same, you know, <laughs> we're dealing with the same thing. We're not any, we're, we're not any further along, you know, we're, we're really, you know, it, it's, uh, it's upon each individual to do this process for themselves, to awaken from the dream. Society as a whole is not going to do it anytime soon, right? You have to do it yourself and you have to learn to, to, to let go of the idea of sin and guilt and punishment within yourself. You have to realize that that, 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 that that is keeping you from your joy, from your peace, from your happiness. So to bring it back to the Tenacious D thing, I hope Jack Black comes around with that. You know, I'm not judging him for what he did. I, I think he had a very difficult decision to make there. Um, but I think it comes off as that he threw his, his friend, his brother under the bus there because, um, because he would because he was he was afraid of the of of how he would look <clears throat> and he was afraid of that he would be um implicated in that but all he had to do was to say Kyle's my brother I love my brother we've we've made great music together he made a mistake he said the wrong thing in that moment which anyone could have said and we've all we've all said things that we later regret and he's sorry for it. And I hope you can forgive him. I forgive him. And I think that's the, the, the course of simple answer to these kinds of things, right? It doesn't have to be so serious. You know, I think Jack, Jack Black for once might've been too serious about that. Now I could be wrong. I, I'm, I'm happy to be wrong. I don't know the whole situation and I don't know. I don't, I'm, again, I'm not judging anyone. I'm not judging Jack Black. I'm just trying to bring some some um, thoughts based on what, what the Course is teaching into this, into what I know about this situation. So love your comments, your feedback, questions, anything. Um, yeah, all right, <laughs> rock on. I love Tenacious D. I hope they, they continue making music till the end of their days and beyond. So, all right. <laughs> um.